Okay, good morning. Today I am not standing with the window behind me, so hi hopefully you can see me. We're working with um, Dylan and his mommy, Amy. Hello. And we are working with talking about the connection between the enteric nervous system and the central nervous system. So I'm going to send this over to look at Dylan. So I'm talking to mom. Dylan, as a reminder, Dylan has cerebral palsy, which we know has a lot to do with oxygen deprivation at some point um, in utero, during labor, or delivery, or all of the above, somehow a tie-in. And so what happens is, you can see with the CP that his central nervous system causes him to twist and turn this way. So, if you can just hold her for one sec, so, yeah, one sec. Do you mind taking her out? Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Be wherever you want to be. Okay, well now I have both of you in the okay. picture. Okay, so is it on? Yep. Okay, so, um, sorry, we're switching mom with me. What happens is, and I finally got this figured out, so I really want to share this with everybody, is that you know, we don't just have the central nervous system, but we also have the enteric nervous system. And there are people that treat, like the Feldenkrais method and other things, we, we say that we treat the whole person, but we're trained to, te to treat only really the central nervous system, meaning the brain, spinal cord, all the, in um, the nerves that uh, go out, go into the spinal cord, and so up to the brain and communicate with retraining the brain to learn to function better. I get that, but there's people that do visceral manipulation and that's the enteric nervous system. Well, there's people that do cooking that are gluten-free and all of that that talks about the enteric nervous system and the gut and the tie-in with the gut to the brain. If that's the case, then that means we have a direct central highway that connects the nervous system of the gut, the enteric nervous system, and the central nervous system. So what is happening as Dylan goes into this curve, which is his curve that he tends to go into, that's his central nervous system. So I'm going to go over and show his enteric nervous system that it can unwind. You see, that's all I did. I probably used the pressure of one and a half grapes under my feet, under my fingers. And what I'm doing is when his central nervous system flips out and it ties him up, it then connects directly to the highway of his enteric nervous system. Amy, does this make sense to you? Totally, because we've noticed that when he gets into these curving patterns, right. it and we vent him. Yep. Yeah it will calm him down sometimes. That's right. So what we need to do is we need to know we have a direct route between central and enteric. Direct route. And that's all we need to do. So we've got that. The enteric nervous system gets tripped off by the central nervous system. And it starts to do the contracting and pulling and it's pulling up the organs and all of that. And then we just come in and undo that. So here we go. There's his central nervous system, right? I'm going to go back here. There. I probably am at the weight of one grape, and I'm going to give him there. So, so, there you go. That's it. But that's not bad for a kid with CP. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome to show. So that's something you guys can use today. This is something I'm now, we're going to turn off and I'm going to show Amy how to do this. So Amy's going to be able to take this home and work this with Dylan every time this starts to happen. How awesome to teach your clients, your parents, how to do this with their kids. <laughs> Say it. It's the brain-gut connection, which is what everyone's talking about within autism specifically, with the diet and how it can help with behavior, getting rid of behaviors or calming behaviors, and I've totally noticed it with him. I've noticed it with myself being gluten-free and how when digestion is working properly, I feel more 
alert. <laughs> and I'm sure. Yeah. Everyone, everyone talks everyone, about that alertness. Everyone, yeah. See, and as a matter of fact, when, when things are working properly. Here's Dylan. We had turned off the, comu uh, the computer. We turned off the camera. And I mean, as, and I, that's all I did. And this is him. And how um, often does that happen? I mean, normally when he starts the turning, it starts to trick in all kinds of other issues, right? Yeah, it just it just snowballs. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to wait. We're going to do some other work with him. We'll work through the feet and through the heels to make that connection up. Again, we've talked about. And that's Roger Russell's wonderful work that we learned this summer at the, um, at the conference that I was teaching you. And... Uh, then we're going to do that and see if that somehow trips off. You never know because the heels connect with the extensor muscles yeah. and that may trip that off, but that's okie doke because we have some good tools how to work with getting him back in order with that. Okay?